articulation as its center thus. It can also glide a little. This is the cricothyroid ligament. It prevents the cartilages from moving too far apart at the front. Here are the cricothyroid muscles, so-called because they arise from the cricoid cartilage at the front and fan out toward the back to be inserted in the lower edge of the thyroid cartilage. When the cricothyroid muscles contract, there is a combination of both the rocking and the gliding of the thyroid cartilage. They pull partly downward and partly forward. These white bands are called the vocal ligaments. They extend from the angle of the thyroid cartilage to the arytenoid cartilages. One ligament is attached to each vocal process. When the cricothyroid muscles are relaxed, the vocal ligaments are slack. When the cricothyroid muscles contract, the ligaments are stiff. Under these conditions, at very high pitches, the vocal ligaments function almost independently of the vocal muscles, rather like strings. We notice that the action of the cricothyroid muscles tenses the ligaments, but does not bring them together. These are the thyroarytenoid muscles. They arise from the thyroid cartilage and are inserted in the arytenoid cartilages. They are complex and are composed of several bundles of muscle fiber. The bundles which lie beside the vocal ligaments and which are loosely connected to them are the internal thyroarytenoid muscles. They attach in part to the vocal processes and extend toward the muscular processes and form the body of the vocal folds. The internal thyroarytenoid muscles are also called the vocalis muscles. More colloquially, these structures, consisting of the vocalis muscles, the vocal processes, and the vocal ligaments, are called the true vocal cords. Lying beside the internal thyroarytenoids are the external thyroarytenoid muscles, part of which has been removed and does not show in our picture at this moment. They attach to the muscular processes and all along the outside edges of the arytenoid cartilages up toward the apex. Let us observe the functions of the adjusting muscles with reference to the vocal folds. Moving the vocal folds away from the center is called abduction. Moving the vocal folds toward the midline is called adduction. When the posterior cricoarytenoids contract, the arytenoid cartilages are separated and the space between the vocal folds is large. This space is called the glottis. In breathing, the glottis is open. The posterior cricoarytenoids are the chief abductory muscles. The interarytenoid muscles, on the other hand, are adductory. When they contract, the apexes of the arytenoids are drawn together. posterior cricoarytenoid, interarytenoid. The lateral cricoarytenoid muscles bring the vocal processes toward midline. Here is what happens when they work alone. We see that the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles exert a leverage so that the vocal processes are pressed together. We shall call this medial compression. But to close the glottis completely, we must contract both the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles and the interarytenoid muscles. Posterior, laterals, interarytenoids. Posterior, laterals, interarytenoids. Posterior, laterals, interarytenoids. Posterior. 
When the thyroarytenoid muscles contract, they reduce the distance between the angle of the thyroid and the arytenoid cartilages, and the vocal ligaments are slackened. On the other hand, when the thyroid moves forward, away from the arytenoids, the vocal folds are stretched. It is the cricothyroid muscles that do this. This action stretches the vocal folds. We shall call it longitudinal tension. We might expect longitudinal tension to close the glottis, but instead there appears a narrow opening, even though the interarytenoid muscles are contracting. Adequate medial compression will close this chink. Here is an interior view of the larynx. The thyroid cartilage has been cut through here. Here is the front of the cricoid, also cut through. And here is the plate. It has been necessary to drive two nails through the cricoid. This is the arytenoid cartilage. Here is what happens when the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle contracts. Now the lateral cricoarytenoid. Posterior, lateral. Posterior, lateral. This is the vocal ligament. It is the thickened upper edge of a membrane which strengthens the underside of the thyroarytenoid muscles. This membrane is called the conus elasticus. Its lower edge attaches to the upper edge of the cricoid cartilage, and it includes the cricothyroid ligament. As we see the specimen now, there is no longitudinal tension and so the vocal fold is loose and thick. The cross section of the vocal fold is determined by the thickness of the vocalis muscle when the longitudinal tension is very small. We shall call the tone produced by such an adjustment chest voice. Now, as longitudinal tension is applied, see how the vocal fold thins out. This thin edge is really the vocal ligament. When longitudinal tension is great, the shape of the vocal fold is largely determined by the vocal ligament. We shall call this the falsetto adjustment. As a matter of convenience, the action of the cricothyroid muscle is usually conceived as causing the thyroid cartilage to rock on the cricoid cartilage. It is shown thus in our film. However, if the thyroid is held motionless, the cricoid must rock, thus. This is more nearly what happens in life. However, for the highest tones of the voice, when the muscles of the throat lift the larynx, the larynx as a whole is tilted. The vocal folds are stretched in any case, but the picture in the laryngeal mirror is different. For the lowest pitches, when the cricothyroids are not contracting, the arytenoids obscure the view of the back part of the folds. This position gives the best view. We are now going to apply air to our specimen and observe the vibration of the vocal folds. It will be necessary to remove the horns of the thyroid to avoid interference with our thread. There is no longitudinal tension so the vocal folds are loose and thick, and the sound will be that of chest voice. The glottis opens by contraction of the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles. Now the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles relax. Listen to the tone when both the interarytenoid muscles and the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles contract. It is necessary to use a contact microphone so there are small differences in loudness and quality between our soundtrack and the airborne sound. It is possible to slow this vibration, apparently, by means of stroboscopic light and a delta F generator so that one cycle of vibration will last about one second on the screen. This makes it possible for us to observe in detail the vibrational pattern of chest voice. Let us note some of the distinguishing characteristics. 
We have already noted that this vibrational pattern is the result of having little or no longitudinal tension, very little elongation of the vocal folds. The vocal ligaments are slack and the vocal folds are thick. The amplitudes of the vibration